Hey, I'm Stephen and this is Solving the Money Problem. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So unless you've been living under a rock for the past week or two, you've probably heard a bit of discussion about Tesla's PR department. Well, actually, their lack of a PR department because they don't have one. I'm going to put this to bed once and for all. Let me tell you guys in no uncertain terms. Tesla does not need a public relations department, period. And in this video, I'm going to explain why. I'll run you through my logic and reasoning. Those are two key words there. Logic and reasoning. And hopefully you guys will come to the same conclusion, of course. It's fine if you don't. That's totally fine. We're welcome to disagree. I will have to make some assumptions here, think about things in the future. So I can't prove that I'm right or wrong, but I just want to share my thoughts because I see a lot of people sharing their thoughts and they seem to be getting stuck one or two layers deep in terms of thinking, not really digging deep enough. So in this video, I'm going to dig as far as I can, share my thoughts and reasoning around why Tesla doesn't need a PR department and why I'm so confused as to how other people haven't been able to come to this same conclusion. Now, I may sound a little bit arrogant here. I totally understand that, but I, it's really really like it, it hurts my brain to even try to understand how people aren't seeing things the way that I'm seeing it. Now I understand how arrogant this is going to come across but I just want to be honest with you guys. I've been watching, I'm not going to name names, but I've heard the arguments from most of the prolific people in this space whether it's on Twitter, on YouTube etc. sharing their thoughts and reasoning as to why Tesla does need a PR department and I'm going to be honest, I haven't heard a single valid point based on the assumptions that I have which could be wrong. So. If my assumptions are wrong, then there's been many, many, many valid points. But I personally don't believe my assumptions are wrong, and I'm going to give you some evidence as to why I believe that's the case. So let's get into it. And by the way, since I know there's a lot of crypto lovers watching and people who like free stuff, it's your lucky day. For a limited time, you can get up to $250 in free crypto bonuses when funding a new account on BlockFi, where you can use cryptocurrency to earn interest, borrow cash, and buy or sell crypto. If you want your free crypto, use the link in the description. It also helps out the channel. And if you'd like up to two free stocks, check out the link in the description to Weeble. If you open a new account, you'll get one free stock valued up to $250 just for opening an account. And if you fund your account with $100, you'll get a second free stock valued up to $1,600. Unless you don't like free stocks, that is. And if you're in Australia, the UK, or New Zealand, you can get a free stock with stake also using the link in the description. Let's get back to it. So first matter of business, let's find some common ground. Question. If somebody in the media says something extremely negative and incorrect, false, etc. about Tesla, does that have the potential to cause people to believe something that's untrue and false about Tesla and then potentially cause them to say never buy a Tesla because they heard once even though it wasn't true that they're unsafe, etc.? The answer to this unquestionably is yes. Okay, I acknowledge that. One more time. Media says something wrong about Tesla. That can cause people to never buy a Tesla, to hate on the company, to never investigate again. I accept this. This is a fair statement, okay? This is absolutely true. This is one layer deep. But we need to dig a little bit deeper than that, don't we? So here's a follow-up question. Is Tesla production constrained? Spoiler alert, yes. In fact, I've been saying this for a long time. I mean, you'd have to be a moron not to realize this because every quarter they sell all their production out and they have been since day one. It's kind of obvious. But we've recently garnered some really interesting, fascinating insight into just how much demand there is. We've heard rumors recently from Electric. In fact, let's have a read. Tesla's demand is through the roof, already sold out this quarter from Fred Lambert on May 6th. So basically just over one month into the quarter, already sold out of the entire quarter's demand. Very interesting. Let's read on. Let's read the quote here. First of all, Tesla is currently seeing exceptionally strong demand for its vehicles as it has already sold out for the quarter, according to sources familiar with the matter. And just for some context, this has since been verified by Sawyer Merritt's inside sources at Tesla. So this wasn't just a rumor. It seems to be relatively substantiated. So let's proceed on the basis that this is accurate information. During Tesla's Q1 2021 earnings conference call, CEO Elon Musk commented on strong demand for the automaker. We've seen a real shift in customer perception of electric vehicles, and our demand is the best we've ever seen. We're used to seeing a reduction in demand in the first quarter and we saw an increase in demand that exceeded the normal seasonal reduction in demand in Q1. This shift in demand is apparently extending into the second quarter. Sources familiar with the matter told Electrek that Tesla communicated to employees that production capacity for the second quarter is already sold out with almost two months left in the quarter. So let's take a pause here to let the implications of this sink in. Now, I'm just going to use some ballpark numbers, so please don't be that dickhead in the comments. I'm just trying to illustrate a point here. If Tesla's already sold out of the entire quarter's production about one month into the quarter, then we can infer that they have approximately three times as much demand for their vehicles at this point in time than they're actually able to produce per quarter. 
In other words, if Tesla suddenly overnight tripled their production, let's say almost 600,000 vehicles per quarter, about 2.4 million vehicles per year, they would still sell every single one of them at today's prices. But of course, you've got economies of scale, you've got localization, new factories opening up in Berlin and Austin. This means the actual prices of these will be lower. That means there's going to be even more demand for these vehicles. Oh, and by the way, that's not even including the release of the Cybertruck or any future products, which themselves will dramatically expand Tesla's addressable market. Okay. I just want you guys to really let that one sink in, okay? Because this is where we're at today. Tesla has way more demand than they can possibly meet right now. And we've got a little bit of an indicator of just how much more demand is. And that's based on today's prices, today's vehicles, no more economies of scale, no more price reductions, and no more products. So we can infer a little bit from this, can't we? All right, so let's play along at home, folks. This is going to be a really fun exercise. What do you think happens if somebody hears a really bad, false misleading thing about Tesla in the mainstream media, but Tesla sells every vehicle they made that quarter anyway, because they had way, 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 in fact, three times as much demand as they could actually meet. Maybe that person never buys a Tesla. Does it matter? Does it affect Tesla's ability to sell every single vehicle they make? I would suggest the answer to that would be no. Tesla will still sell every single vehicle they make unless the FUD is so incredibly effective that suddenly two thirds of the people that were going to purchase a Tesla are actually buying into the FUD and believe it and decide, you know what, I'm not going to buy a Tesla. That would be a problem. Now, I just want to really emphasize this point. If Tesla was not production constrained, negative press would be a really big issue and Tesla should have a PR department. But the point that I'm making here, which a lot of people seem to be missing, and this is my final point, don't worry, I'm going to go even deeper, but this is an important point. The point that I'm making is that it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if Joe Blow decides he's never buying a Tesla because he heard something dumb on CNBS because there's 10 other people in line ready to buy a Tesla anyway, okay? Important point, can we all agree on this much? If they have more demand than they can actually meet, it doesn't matter if some of the negativity in the press actually prevents people from buying a Tesla because they'll still sell every vehicle they make at least over the short to medium term. Do we all agree on this? I think we can all agree on this. If we can't, I don't know. Just go. I mean, you're a lost cause, dude. This is the part in the video where I have to make a bit of a leap and a stretch. I have to make some massive assumptions here. So I could be wrong and the entire foundation of my argument will collapse and crumble if I'm incorrect. So I don't want to be that guy that says, hey, I'm right. I know exactly what's going on. The end. If I'm wrong about this, then my entire argument crumbles into a heap and Tesla should have a PR department. If I'm being honest, I don't believe I'm wrong. But let me make my point here. Maybe you guys can let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Have you heard of this company, Apple? You probably have, right? Do you think there's a single person, like literally anywhere on planet Earth, who's heard of Apple and doesn't have a positive view on the company? Of course, there's a couple of people that hate on them, but generally speaking, most people know of Apple and know they make great quality products. It's a very aspirational brand. This is literally why they're one of the world's most valuable companies. They're just a gigantic money printer. They're going to keep growing and growing and growing over time. Can we agree on this? Most people today have experienced or heard secondhand from a person about what it's like to own an Apple product, the quality, etc. Universally, people understand and agree that Apple makes great quality products. Is this a fair thing to say? I believe it is. Where am I going with this? Glad you asked. Tesla is scaling their production at a stupid rate. And remember, I've talked about economies of scale, new products. They're going to have more demand because each new product, each time they drive costs down, more people can afford their vehicles. So over time, even though they're already production constrained, they're still going to remain production constrained, in my opinion, for a very, very, very long time because prices keep coming down, market expands. And this is the point I want to get to. According to my estimates, which of course you can say, hey, they're totally wrong. Let's say in the year 2031, Tesla will produce around 20 million vehicles. And by that time, there will be around 100 million Teslas on roads on planet Earth. In other words, most people, not everybody, but most people will have had the opportunity to interact directly by experiencing a product, either being in a Tesla, seeing one, etc. Or they will at least know somebody, a friend or family member who has a Tesla product. And they will know, just like everyone knows that Apple makes great products, that Tesla makes great products as well. Now, yes, there'll be some people that heard FUD 10 years ago that never touch a Tesla again. Okay, I want to acknowledge that point because some people get stuck here and they don't think more. And it's, I get that. Okay, I admit that. There will be people that heard FUD in 2012, in 2015, in 2021, who never, ever, ever buy a Tesla because of the FUD. But if the vast majority of people in 2031, just like today, everyone knows Apple makes great products, knows Tesla makes great products, and that's a point maybe that Tesla is no longer production constrained, did the FUD actually matter? And this is my point. No. Sum up my argument in real simple terms. Today, 
Tesla is production constrained. So the FUD sucks, I get it. It's not nice that people believe things that aren't true about Tesla, but the FUD is causing zero material damage to Tesla because they're selling every vehicle they make. And I believe this continues for a long enough period of time until such point as there's so many Teslas out on roads that everybody, practically speaking, don't put that dick in the comments like I said, practically everybody knows that Tesla makes great products and therefore the FUD is meaningless. Now, I really want to acknowledge this point. It sucks that people believe things that aren't true about Tesla. It sucks when there's FUD. I mean, I spent a lot of time and energy countering the FUD on YouTube, which is one of the other reasons Tesla doesn't need a PR department, if I'm being completely honest. But that's a separate issue to whether or not it can have a material damaging impact on Tesla's business. The foundation of my argument is quite simple. It won't. It sucks, but it's meaningless in the big picture. Hi, Steven. I bet you didn't think about this, you dumbass. What about the regulators approving the full self-driving, the autonomous software, you idiot? Did you think about that, huh? What if they believe the FUD and don't approve it, you moron? Did you think of that? I bet you didn't think of that. Unfortunately, I have also thought about this. Now, I do need to again make some assumptions here, and maybe I'm completely naive and have a little too much faith in humanity, but I genuinely believe that, generally speaking, the regulators, despite the fact that they are human beings, generally do their jobs relatively well. And how do they do their jobs? By looking at data. Remember, Tesla collects a trove of data. They will be able to prove unequivocally with data that their full self-driving software at some point in the future is far safer than human drivers. The regulators won't be able to fight reality, in my opinion. And again, this is another point. If I'm wrong about this, my argument crumbles. I totally admit that. But I genuinely believe that you know, 99.9% .9 of people in this industry regulating, potentially approving this autonomous software will look at the data. When Tesla can prove unequivocally, and I mean prove with data, unequivocally, that their software is five times safer, 10 times safer than humans, going, look how few accidents there are per mile, blah, 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 blah. I really don't believe any regulator is gonna be able to argue the case. And in fact, I think that they're gonna jump on the opportunity to save lives and allow Tesla to deploy this software. And I wanna be really clear, the FUD can still get in the minds of some of these regulators and they're like, oh, Teslas are unsafe. But I believe that when they actually look at the data that Tesla presents to them, the overwhelming amount of evidence, data, that they're safer than human-driven vehicles, it's going to be too hard to argue with that. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below, guys. Have I made some false assumptions? Have I missed anything? Do you disagree with the points that I've made or are you on the same page? I'm Stephen Mark Ryan. This is Solving the Money Problem and I love you all. And don't forget, if you'd like up to $250 in free crypto bonuses with BlockFi, use the link in the description. You can also get two free stocks with Weeble and a free stock with Stake also linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And of course, if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know. I read all your comments. P.S. If you're still watching, you're awesome. If you'd like early access, exclusive videos, regular Q&As, our private Discord server and more, consider supporting the channel at patreon.com slash solving the money problem so I can keep creating content for you guys. There's a link in the description. You can now also become a member of the channel for some exclusive perks. To learn more, click the join button next to subscribe. And don't don't forget to check out our merch store. Either way, the best form of support is you being here and watching, so thanks again.